What's the difference between a server, serverless, and fluid compute? I wanna talk through some of the differences here and why I'm really excited about fluid compute. And to start, let's talk about servers. So typically with a server, you're configuring and managing and scaling your own hardware. And you know, lots of people enjoy doing this type of infrastructure work on a VPS or on a higher kind of auto scaling system like a Kubernetes. Um, you can send many different requests into your server and that can be you know, very practical for certain sizes of applications. But as you get a really large amount of traffic, you might reach a situation where you've overloaded your CPU and you need to go in and either manually scale up your hardware, purchase better hardware, or invest in a system that can do that scaling automatically for you, which can be more configuration or more work on your side. Now, it's not to say that this is bad. You know, Lots of people enjoy doing this type of work and this model works for many different applications, but there have been some attempts to improve on this compute model, um, notably with serverless. So serverless popularized by AWS Lambda was trying to be a model that was more efficient. Now, when this came out, it was mostly for background jobs and not necessarily for serving incoming requests through Node.js. And as you can see, every incoming request spins up a new serverless instance. So it's actually not really the most efficient one here compared to sending multiple requests into a server. But the nice thing is that we're not accumulating usage while the functions are not running. Now, you'll notice in the bottom left, we have this CPU work and idle time. So right now, while there's no functions active, we're having this cold start where we start up a server and then we're able to visualize the CPU work in the idle time. In the serverless model, you're accumulating usage for both CPU time as well as idle time, like talking to a database or an AI model. So it's not really the most efficient model, but it's still been very popular for many different types of applications. And for Vercel specifically, we've ran server hardware before, we've ran serverless hardware uh, currently, and we've tried to take the best parts of both servers and serverless and put them into this fluid compute model, make it in a way that's very easy for you to adopt um, without a lot of configuration. So with fluid, for example, um, we keep one instance running so you don't have cold starts. If I send in multiple requests into a function, I don't have that one-to-one -one model. I can send in many requests into a fluid instance. You know, This isn't the exact number of requests per instance, but it's just a visualization to help. And going back to the CPU idle time, you'll notice that my usage is lower than before because you're not getting charged for that additional idle time. So when you're doing the talking to your AI model or talking to your database, it can be much more cost effective for those type of applications. And it can still automatically scale up based on your incoming traffic and then scale back down when you don't have those spikes of a lot of traffic. So we're pretty excited about this model just to put all these together so you can kind of see what this looks like. I'll reset the usage and I'll start making some requests. You know, we'll start off with a pretty slow traffic pattern, not really a lot going on. And you'll notice this is where you can start to see some of the differences over the lifetime of a server versus serverless versus fluid. When you're kind of at low traffic, for example, the server's just always running. You're always accumulating that usage. You're always paying for whatever hardware that you've chosen to provision, maybe you got it right, maybe it's over-provisioned and you have too much hardware. Uh, for serverless, you know, you're still you know, having a little bit more usage because of that idle time that's also being include, uh, included. But then as I make more requests here, oh, I just got a big spike of traffic and I scale up to handle all of that. Oh, my server went down, unfortunately. Serverless scaled up to handle it, but actually it was maybe not the most efficient in terms of cost versus fluid, which was much more efficient for the overall function usage based on you know, how you talk to that AI model or that database. So that's a quick overview of fluid, of servers and serverless and some of the differences between the two. The best part of this demo is that it was built in V0. So shout out to Timo on our team who built this. I honestly couldn't believe that this was made in V0. It was very, very helpful for me to understand how this model works and better visualize it. And also shout out to Dan who kind of forked this and then made another visualization of this, which rebuilt one of the graphs you see in the Vercel dashboard that shows you how much function usage you're saving when you're using Fluid. Now, 
of course, this isn't perfect and uh, it's a little laggy, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but it's showing you how much you're saving in terms of the difference between traditional serverless and the Fluid model. If you wanna try out Fluid Compute on your project, just go into settings under functions, flip on the Fluid Compute switch and redeploy your project. And then you can go to the observability view if you want to monitor latency and see the overall performance of your application. Uh, let us know how it goes. I'd love to hear how much you're saving on the fluid compute model. Uh, shoot me a message on X. Peace.